السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين All praise and glory to Allah and peace and blessings of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم All the Anbiya Shuhad and Salihin You know, uh, before deciding to do the talk I am going to do now, inshallah I was thinking, what should I talk about? And since Donald Trump became the President of the United States, one well, feels tempted to talk about what it could mean and the consequences, the dangers that lurk for Muslims, you know, or whatever the consequences are. And then I began thinking and saying, regardless of this, you know, we, we take Donald Trump becoming the President of the United States as something that could have serious consequences and we need to know what's going on. But in reality, I decided to speak about something far more important than Donald Trump. Something that we take for granted, something that we uh, underrate, and that is rain. You know, last year we've had drought. The past few years have been drought years with a lack of rainfall or limited rainfall. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks, talks about rain often in the Quran. It's an important uh, element that Allah created for us, for us to appreciate life-giving force. You know? And we don't, we don't really give it its due attention. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala firstly states, let's start off with a few verses regarding rain. So Allah says in chapter 42, verse 28, Awadu billahi min shaitan al-rajim, bismillah rahman rahim وَهُوَ الَّذِي يُنَزِّلُ الْغَيْثِ It is Allah who sends out rain مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا قَنَتُ Even after men have given up all hope وَيَنْشُرُ الرَّحْمَةُ وَهُوَ الْوَلِيُّ الْحَمِيدِ And scatters his mercy far and wide and he is the protector worthy of all praise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alludes to this fact that we just went through. The fact that dams uh, draining faster than they are building up supplies. You know, we had record lows of dams last year. People were praying, whether you're a Muslim or a Christian, there were soccer fields uh, filled with people coming to pray for rain, and there was a state of worry and concern, especially those who are living in uh, farm areas and rural areas were really concerned, you know, Maybe us suburban people, we don't appreciate this rain the way they do that side. You know, there are people living in rural areas last year that lost a lot of livestock, cows, and sheep. Some of those people, that was their only wealth. And the drought has caused a lot of damage to people's agriculture and livestock. And they feel it. And last year was a year of great concern, you know. So Allah says, You know, and people say, hey, you know, maybe like I said, we're not farmers, but we also came to the stage, we say, what's going to happen? What's going to happen in 2017 if the rain doesn't come? What's seriously going to happen? We've seen people on, on, on the TV, you know, without water and buckets coming in. And then you find that people become hostile and people become uh, agitated, there's no water. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a dangerous situation. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something even similar to this, just reminding us of this need of his. Allahu alladhi yurusilu riyah It is Allah who sends the winds and they raise the clouds. Then does he spread them in the sky as he wills and breaks them into fragments until you see raindrops issue from the midst thereof. Then when he has made them reach such of his servants as he wills, behold they do rejoice. Ida hum yastab shirun They get happy. Even though before they received the rain, just before this, they were dumb with despair. Min kablihi lahubli seen. They were confused. So this, this uh, idea of the drought, this idea of um, uh, the rain coming in at a time when people become desperate, is something that is common. It's something that has happened for centuries. And this again reflects Allah's Allah's amazing mercy. You know, last year people were really, un really concerned especially farmers, people who had livestock, uh, people were losing their livestock and people were really getting worried and saying, the rain doesn't come soon, we in disaster. 
that Allah says this is common, it happens. Allah is part of the Sunnah of Allah. Every now and then you're going to go through it. It's something to bring our attention back to this beautiful phenomenon, beautiful gift of Allah called rain. <laughs> rain should not be taken lightly. It's a huge gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a huge gigantic sign that points to His magnificence and mercy. So every now and then we, f- we go through this thing called drought to, you know, to stir our hearts and our minds, to stir our focus back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, uh, we get so caught up with our lives that we cannot see the beautiful rain. Now, <clears throat> we might take rain lightly, but I just like to talk a little bit about the economic impact of rain. If you look at rain, historically, was the most important factor for thousands of years. So if you take an analogy, if they had stock markets thousands of years ago, then the most significant factor that would determine prices would be rain. Rain was it. This was the resource that created wealth and progress. Doesn't mean it doesn't do it today. Maybe to a lesser extent, but till today. If you only look at the rain dollar and things like that are affected by this drought. It's important to understand this. Allah subhanAllah mentions this in the Quran. And I think that's very important. These verses are all from the Quran. I'm, as I'm quoting, I want you to understand that, like I said, this issue of rain is more important than Donald Trump. Really. The consequences of our negligence, our ingratitude, our lack of appreciation and recognition for this gift of Allah is, is detriment to our, our own, to lead to our own detriment. More than Donald Trump can ever destroy us or hurt us. Let me tell you that. So Allah says this, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنَّكَ تَرَى الْأَرَضَ خَوْشِيَا You see the earth, it is barren, khashia, humble, it is desolate, it's dry. فَإِذَا عَنْزَلْنَا عَلَيْهَا الْمَا Then we send out water from it, from the sky, that is rain. أَحْتَزَّبْ it, it shakes, it stirs up, the earth becomes stirring. You know when the water falls on the ground, there's things happening underground, there's a whole commotion going on underground. وَرَابَتْ <laughs> That is very important. So Allah says, وَرَابَتْ So once the water comes down, there's a stirring, and there's something called رَابَتْ. We'll talk about it just now. إِنَّ الَّذِي أَحْيَاهَا لَمُحْيَا الْمَوْتَىٰ إِنَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ But when we send down rain to it, it stirs to life and yields increase. Truly, he who gives life to the dead earth can surely give life to men who are dead. For he has power of all things. رَابَتْ Allah describes what effect rain has as رَابَتْ. أَحْتَزَتْ وَرَابَتْ أَحْتَزَتْ The earth gets stirred up. And then رَابَتْ Yusuf Ali translated as yields increase. رَابَتْ رَابَوَ Riba comes from the same root, which it means increase. Access. And I like how this one guy who put the meaning, he says, in an addition, obtain more than what was supposed to be received. To grow or swell. Now, what happens with rain? There's a stirring of life, there's an abundance of growth. Abundance of growth. And to understand this abundance of growth, I'll give you an example. In the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks of charity, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes an analogy of, of the charity using a maize plant. So Allah says, if you do one good deed, it's like 700 rewards. If you plant one seed of maize, it, that plant yields 700 kernels on what we commonly know as millis. Okay, if you eat a milli, the 700 kernels on there came from one seed. One seed becomes 700 kernels. That is growth, that is Robert. You see, and this is a true growth. When we talk of economic growth, today our sight is blurred by, um, by an obscure growth. You know, this plant the seed, you see the growth, you maybe cost you 10 cents and you get two rand, I don't know exactly, but this amazing growth. And this is the heart of the economy. But today we have a different type of economic growth. We have money creation, we have uh, control of uh, the supply of money. And this control, the banks decide to give everybody loans, and all of a sudden house prices are up. Because there's a, the, the demand is cre- was created. Uh, now all of a sudden people are buying houses like crazy, prices go up. The banks realize they made a mistake. Not made a mistake. <laughs> it was planned, and then they cut down the loans, and the prices start falling again. This is an artificial type of increase. 
But vegetation is seriously true growth. You can see the Tencent became 2 rand, the 1 kernel became 700 kernels. And this is the beauty of, of agriculture. Obviously, we're not a community in agriculture, so I might not be exciting you as much as if I gave this talk somewhere in uh, Rustenburg or somewhere. But it's the truth. It's a reality. This is blessed growth. A house doesn't grow bigger to get more money. You just play with it, supply and demand of money itself, not property itself. But the plant that grows, the apple seed that grows into an apple tree, that is brilliant growth. Long-lasting growth for an economy. Today we take rain for granted. Well, how foolish are we as creatures? Like I said, this is an important rain, is something that we should uh, appreciate. Like I said, over 43 times is the term rain or uh, uh, in relation to rain mentioned in the Quran. It's a very common thing. If you read the Quran, you'll find Anzalna mina sama ima. We send down water from the skies. Now, we spoke about the economic impact of rain on agriculture and real solid growth. Then we look at the beauty of rain, you know, and the benefit of rain. Allah subhanahu wa says, Alam tara anna Allah anzala mina sama ima. So Allah starts this verse and He says, Do you not see? How does Allah say that? Do you not see? Why do you say, do you not? Because you're not doing it. <laughs> Allah says, do it. It's a question. To say, hey, well, you're not doing it, do it. Tell a child, do your homework. You know, this is another thing. Do you not see? Almost like, are you foolish? Are you blind? What is wrong with you? When you say, do you not see? Somebody cuts across your path by driving a car. Look at this idiot, does not see where he's going. I'm not saying the guy cut, you're saying something about this person. It's a foolishness, it's a blindness. Do you not see that Allah sends down rain from the sky? Fatusbihul aradu muhtarra. Now, since reading Quran and understanding in English, one of the verses that are so, so I love this verse, the way Yusuf Ali translated it. It says, aradu muhtarra. And forthwith the earth becomes clothed with green. In Allah Latif al Khabir. How beautiful. Mukhdara means green. I mean, how, how many seasons do we go through? You, I mean, if you're driving, you'll see the you're driving, the back road of Irashmi, you're driving here, you see the hills, you're in Lodia, it's brown. And then the rain comes, and then it's green. It stays like that for two, three months. For two, three months, it's brown, two, three months, it's green. And it's like flashing in front of you. Why is it flashing? To say, recognize me, recognize your Allah's power. Turn and see. It is will arad al-mukhdara. Everything becomes clothed with green. Wallahu anzal min al-samai ma an fa'ahya bil arad ba'da mawtiha. It is Allah who sends rain from the sky and gives there with life to the earth after its death. In the fidalika la ayah li kawmi yasma. In this is a sign for those who listen. This is an ayah. This is a sign for human beings. It is he who sends down rain. There's so many verses. I'm just going to try and cut a bit short here. But it, it is he who sends down rain from the skies. With it will produce vegetation of all kinds. From some we produce green crops, out of which we produce grain, corn, wheat, all this heaped up at harvest. From um, out of the date palm in its sheaths of space come clusters of dates hanging low and near. And then there are gardens of grapes and olives and pomegranates, each similar in kind yet different in variety. When they begin to bear fruit, Feast your eyes with the fruit and the ripeness thereof. Behold, in these things are there signs for people who believe. If you've got Iman, you see it. Allah said, you've got Iman? You see, when you see the fruit and the vegetables, and not just the taste, but the colors, the spurs, rain is actually like paint. It's like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has thrown paint down. Because when that rain comes down, different colors come. Do you see it? Are you blind? You know, like Harun Yahya puts it so beautifully, he says, we become mentally numb. We don't even see anything. These verses in the Quran, we talk, I'm talking about verses of the Quran, and we talk so much about deen, so much of religion, so, so much of faith. How many, how many of us know all these verses, have we heard these verses about the Quran talking about rain? How many of us? Have we read it? Do you know Allah is talking so much about rain and its beauty and its benefit and its economic importance in the society? Water resource. Man has, given, has been given amazing control over the earth. The one thing man has not been given is control over water. 
You can't control water. Reservoirs, dams, yes, to a certain extent. But the real control has not been given to men. We can obviously see why. <laughs> with what's happening with oil and gold, and how people are manipulative. Okay, so Allah says in the Quran, وَرَسَلْنَ الْرِيَاحَ لَوَاقِهَا And we send that the fecunding winds and cause فَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءَ And we send down water from the sky. There was producing for you water in abundance, though you are not the guardians of its stores. وَمَا أَنْتُمْ لَهُ بِخَازِنِينَ خَازَائِنَ You know, it's a store. You are not in charge of its stores. And then Allah says in Surah Waqiyah, أَفَرَأَيْتُمُ الْمَاءَ الَّذِي تَشْرَبُونَ Do you not? Again, what I said, do you not? أَفَرَأَيْتُمْ Do you not see? أَفَرَأَيْتُمُ الْمَاءَ الَّذِي تَشْرَبُونَ Do you not see the water which you drink? أَأَنْتُمْ أَنْزَلْتُمُوهُ مِنَ الْمُزْنِ أَمْ نَحْنُ الْمُنْزِلُونَ Do you bring it down or do we bring it down? If it were our world, we could make it salt and unpalatable. Then why do you not give thanks? فَلَوْ لَا تَشْكُرُونَ you are not grateful for water. It's a coming. You will suffer more than whatever happens in America with Donald Trump and Mickey Mouse. If, if you are not grateful to Allah for this resource, if you are not conscious of this resource, why does it matter who's running England or America or even Saudi Arabia for that matter? What, what, what is the sense of discussing it if you can't appreciate this one resource? We don't even know what, we don't even care about the rain. We don't even pray for the rain until there's a drought. We don't even know about rain until the lightning knocks the modem and we can't go online on Facebook. So we become ridiculous, mentally numb people. This rain is something when we see it, we should appreciate it and understand its, its impact, economic impact, its social impact in the country itself. And this rain cycle, I'm just going to. Uh, besides the beauty of rain, the benefit of rain, the economic benefit of rain, the food we eat, there's an important analogy that uh, Allah uses in the Quran. And one of the analogies is truly he who gives life to the dead earth. This whole idea of rain is what? Rain comes down to a dead earth and it's served to life and it increases, right? Warabat. In the same way, uh, surely Allah can give life to men who are dead for his power of all things. It's important to understand this part. That how Allah takes this dead land, you see the brown on the mountains and everything, and when the rain comes, it becomes green and beautiful and beneficial. A human being that's dead, like us, mentally numb, looks no conscious, we've actually lost our spirit. We send down water from the sky. And we send down the book. And we send down the book. The same Qur'an, every verse can be thought of like the drops of rain that fall down from the sky. Every verse in every ayah is like a drop of water falling on this ground. And when this Qur'an is studied, when you're reading it and you're learning from it, then the same brown land that there's no benefit, that just looks ugly, will be stirred to life, it become, will become beautiful. And it will become beneficial. So a human being, if you look at the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet they were in Jahiliya. And it was like rain fell on them. This verses of the Quran, they understood it and they started practicing it and they became green. They became beautiful in character. They became beautiful in speech. That's why people study them till today. And they started benefiting community. They started uplifting the society. And this is what happens. Quran, And we send down مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءُ وَرَحْمَةِ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ And this Qur'an is sent down with a cure for the disease of your hearts and your minds. وَرَحْمَةِ and a mercy to the believers. وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِنْ إِلَّا خَسَارَةً But to the unbelievers, it only increases their loss. The seasons, rain and dry seasons. We have the rainy season, the dry season. It's alternating, it shows us one more parable. One is that water descends, gives the dead earth life. Quran descends on a human soul that is dead and gives it life and makes it beautiful and beneficial. Beautiful character, beneficial. One more thing about this life and death cycle that we see every season is another one that and we raise to life there was a land that is dead. Even so will you be raised up. The seasons are also there every time to show you. You're gonna die and you will be raised up. Don't doubt about that. Just as you see the dead earth and the next season you see the, the, the new earth being brought to life, you're going to die and you will be raised up. I've used up too much of the time. I'll end off with the words of Buddha, 
in chapter 11, Surah Hud, where Hud alayhi salam, he speaks to his people, he says, وَيَا قَوْمِ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ O my people, seek forgiveness of your Lord. ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ Then turn to him. يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِذْرَارًا He will send you the skies pouring abundant rain. وَيَزِدُكُمْ قُوَّةً إِلَىٰ قُوَّتِكُمْ And he will add strength to your strength. وَلَا تَتَوَلُّوا مُجْرِمِينَ So turn not you back in sin. This drought cycle, depreciation of water is important. When we appreciate it, we will have growth like you can't believe. When we are unappreciative and we don't give it due recognition, we go back into sin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who recognize His countless favors uh, and make us of those who glorify and praise Him all our days and our nights. And may Allah grant us abundance of rain, beneficial rain, and bless our country with growth, bless this country with His deen and His life. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank mm -hmm. you.